Gambit, Gods, and Goats, the MCU is about to change the comic book speculation landscape forever. Another week, another list, an Overstreet Price Guide advisor on the show. Russ, we had a hell of a week. With the release of Love and Thunder and with the Ms. Marvel final episode happening this week, there's a bunch of spoiler stuff on this list. Comic fam, you are warned. Over four years of producing the trending 10, hit that subscribe button, slap the like button, and at the list at number 10, debuting in 1990, X-Men, issue number 266, the first appearance in full of Gambit. Hitting $200 average sales, CGC 9.8s hitting around $1,000 back in June. Recent 9.8 sales hitting $800, which is pretty affordable considering that the heights that this book reached in 2020 was 17 hundo hot damn. There has been a ton of speculation about mutants in the MCU for years, and Gambit is one that people have been banking on for, again, years. So the fact that this book is seeing a resurgence of 138% increase this week, but still aren't seeing all-time highs, that's a sign this might be a time to get in on this book. Comic Butch in the house. We have a 9.9 that exists. Curious because the last time one sold was back in 2015. There are 15 nine nines graded on the census, and the last one sold for $1,300 seven years ago. How have we not seen one of these hit the market in all this time, even throughout the comic boom? It's probably because people who own it are keeping it in their PC. The newsstand 9.8s are hitting $2,500. Gambit is actually dead in the comics right now. And because of delay, we're about to get a new mini series written by Chris Claremont going back in time, telling the untold tales of Gambit and Storm. Tom, this thing has been delayed so long that when we actually confirmed we were doing a Peach Momoko Gambit variant, you had the original art on your desk two months ago. This guy is super delayed, but one of the best variants I think Mystery Mail Call has had in a long time. The August Mystery Mail Call is an open enrollment. ComicTom101.com to join the community and support the show. One per box. We're sending out a Peach Momoko cover. Story by Chris Claremont. Gambit number one. And with the powers of whatnot, this dual exclusive will allow us to send out virgin copies at random. We can't do that every month, but with the powers of whatnot, we were able to link in the description to join the community. And next on the list, oh my goodness, we're talking about Riri Williams. Number nine in the list, Invincible Iron Man number nine. This is the first full appearance of Riri Williams, and we get to see her in her prototype Iron Man armor. $180 average sales on this, and a recent CGC 9.8 high sale of $600. This book has hit lows of under $500. Back in 2020, however, even 2021, this book hit heights of $1,000, and it was all after a shirt leak posted to Twitter. It was a little blurry, but we do see Riri on the front and a full shot of Riri on the back. And Russ, I think a lot of people may have some negative things to say right now, but they're not realizing that this seemingly is just prototype armor. The pictures we saw leaked on Twitter, number one, they look like fuzzy pictures, but what you can see, it's very much prototype armor. This is not quite Riri as Ironheart. We know that she's working on getting into her actual persona, but it's still a 111% increase since last week's sales of this book. Wakanda Forever merch spike in this comic book. Let's talk about this book I said in front of. Horseman of Apocalypse, The Variant, 9.8s. This last month sold for the record low of $2,995 this week. This book hit heights in February of this year of $4,350. This may be the best time to grab this comic book considering the heights it reached back in 2021 was near $6,000. I had a 9.2 of this book and I regret selling it. And now at the list at number eight, I feel like it's deja vu. We talked about this book weeks on end back when it debuted in 2018. All the way through 2019, we got Venom issue three, debuting in 2018, Donny Cates' goodness, the first appearance of Null. 
$175 average sales, $300 for a CGC 9.8 in this month. And yeah, Tom, this feels a lot like four years ago. This book and all of the rest of Donny Cates' Venom Run kept making the list when we were doing this. And it's great to see it back here again. This book hit a high of $435 for a CGC 9.8 back in May. For the same reason it's spiking this week, in interest that is, we're seeing an increase of 183% in copies sold since the debut of Thor Love and Thunder because this movie covers the narrative of Gore the God Butcher who utilizes the sword, the Necro Sword, which has connections to Null, which was retconned by Donny Cates in 2018 in issue four of this very run, connecting the lore of Venom to Jason Aaron's Thor run. Seeing the Necrosword in Thor Love and Thunder was a great thing, and whether or not it's Null and the symbiotes and the Venom stuff, we don't really know at this point in time. And Marvel already has kind of a logjam with their next phase of the MCU stuff. I really don't see anything long-term happening with a character Null. At least in the MCU. I agree. But what do you think in the comment section below? Let us know. It'll enter you to win this Omni-Man Invincible number one. I would love to see the Lord of the Symbiotes. But we do have Fantastic Four and Mutants to talk about very soon. Hit the subscribe button and let's talk about this Dark Horse property issue number one of Ianu. Child of Wonder at number seven, hitting $15 average sales. This was a Halloween Comic Fest giveaway that debuted in 2019 because this was a Kickstarter for a graphic novel picked up by Dark Horse. And to promote the upcoming release, they came out with a comic book that became the first appearance in comics. And after this got optioned this week for HBO Max, teaming up with Cartoon Network, this is the key book to own. A 700% increase in copies sold this week for a book that comic shops gave away for free at Halloween Comic Fest 2019. This is again one of the type of comic books that we get for a holiday that's a lot like free comic book day that we all kind of forget about. If you were at Halloween Comic Fest 2019, you probably have a bag somewhere in one of your short boxes that has a copy of this in there. I would not be surprised if people picked this up and didn't even know. A coming of age story of an orphan who learns about her powers through the understanding of her history that beautifully is drawn and depicted, harnessing the mythological as well as the historical aspects of the Yoruba culture in Nigeria. With a colorful, beautiful depiction of the culture and the, the tribe and mythology legends, Ianu is definitely going to be something that is beautiful on the screen, and I think HBO Max is going to do a great job with it. And at the list at number six, X-Men number one, 1991, the highest selling comic book of all time, hitting the $8.1 million marker. Hot damn. With a print run that high, it makes sense that we are seeing $5 average sales for a raw copy and high sales of $100 CDC 9.8. Those are like buy it now high sales. If you're patient, you can get copies in the $50 to $70 range on auction all day long. A lot of people have gotten this graded. It's a classic book. It's an iconic book. It has multiple covers, and we definitely see collectors going out of their way to try to get a copy of every single cover. San Diego Comic-Con is next week. We're probably going to get some type of updates, hoping for mutant updates, but probably animation stuff is going to be talked about. That's going to spike up some fun mutant keys, but it's also why we saw X-Men 260 six starting out the list so we have the expensive spec but we also have the more affordable spec which is why this book is moving up 167 percent in copies sold in the last seven days but the ending of ms marvel didn't hurt the movement of this book and this is the uh, spoiler warnings we were telling you about now we knew that ms marvel was going to be a different type of character and right off the bat we found out that she wasn't going to be an inhuman and then she kind of had these power bands that were giving her powers and then there was potential that she could have been a djinn which is why we talked about the clandestine comic book so many times well we finally find out in the final episode that yeah She's got mutant blood. They even play the X-Men theme, guys. Where do you think we're going with this? 
Mutants are coming. I think a lot of members were surprised that it's taking so long. But keep in mind, the industry was shut down for over a year and a half, essentially. We're just catching up, as are the comics. And you mentioned that there was spec that she may have ties to a Jin lineage, that she may be part genie. But we're not talking about just one genie this list. No. Let's talk about 8 billion genies at the list at number five. Eight Billion Genies issue number two, making the list, selling for $15 average sales. And we could have even swapped this comic out for issue three of the same run. Also hitting $15 average sales. Issue number three came out Wednesday of this week, which means issue number two came out just about three weeks ago. This book has been hot since Option News, and I cannot keep it on my shelf, and neither can any other shop in town. What if 8 billion genies granted each member of the population one single wish? Well, to say it gets chaotic is an understatement, and you're right, this was optioned right out the gate after issue number one. And each issue after that has started to see an uptick in copies sold, very similar to what happened last year to Stray Dogs. If you remember Stray Dogs, the first couple issues didn't have more than a cover A and B. And then all of a sudden we had multiple covers, movie homage covers for three, four, five. And then they did more reprints for issue number one. Image has even come out so far to say that they didn't want to do second printings of any more books this year because of a paper shortage. But we are already seeing that there is a second print of 8 Billion Genies number one on the horizon. This means that they know they have a hot property on their hands and they are absolutely helping the comic fam get a copy. Stray Dogs number one at a 9.8 hit heights of like $230. Recent sales? However, put it at like a hundred bucks if you're patient. Now, that book was optioned prior to release, gained some steam, and became one of the number one books of the year. Now, this is definitely one of those situations where you have to decide, do you wait out? Because 9.8s may start selling aggressively and then could come down similar to Stray Dogs. But what if it gets fast-tracked? And that is now the cost of entry on low, affordable possibly banger key books. Keep an eye out for the C2E2 preview from December of last year. Now, we have a very small sample size, but pretty much every copy Tom and I have seen sell on eBay has had a signature and a sketch on the cover. We know only 500 of them were made, and if every single one is signed or sketched, it's probably going to affect the aftermarket. Increased handling when you're doing sketches and signatures, it's a white cover. It could be tough and high grade. CBCS is where a lot of these comics are going to go because they'll authenticate a signature where CGC will not. And a low print of 500 may mean it's a tough book. And if you want to better the hunt, you want to keep up on this rapidly moving marketplace, download the best comic app in existence, support the show. It's called Key Collector Comics, available for both Androids and iPhones. Use code TOM101 to unlock a free two-week subscription. And Russ, you're an LCS owner and you use the app how often? Absolutely every single day, multiple times a day, whether it's a key alert to tell me what comic books are recently optioned or whether it's just to check the important books in a run, I am always using this app. At the list at number four, a book that I always thought was underrated even when it started hitting its peaks with Falcon and Winter Soldier, Captain America, issue 25, debuting in 2014. This is the first appearance of Sam Wilson as Captain America. $50 average sales for a raw high-grade copy and $140 for a CGC 9.8, and that's selling this month. Buy it now so you can buy for $175. We're seeing a 300% increase in copies sold this week because we found out last week that Captain America 4 has secured a director, Julius Ona, who did the Cloverfield Paradox. You know, I love me some science fiction and some kaijus, and I really enjoy Sam Wilson as Captain America. After Thor, Love and Thunder, this is the next, like, Marvel first phase legacy character to get its fourth movie. So with the new Thor movie, that is the fourth legacy movie, and Captain America is getting this fourth. Even though it's a new character, this book is not getting the love it deserves. Back agree, in April man. of last year, we had a high sale of 600 
hundred dollars wow. for a first print nine point eight. The fact that we're seeing them under two hundred right now, this is criminal. This is a great time to pick this book up. This book hitting under two hundred dollars does not make sense to me. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And at the list at number three, Thor, God of Thunder, issue number six, debuting in twenty thirteen. More null to talk about? $60 high sale. We're seeing $300 for a CGC 9.8 back in June. This is the origin of Gore the God Butcher, and we end up seeing a cameo appearance of Null, even though that was a Donny Cates retcon. This book hit $450 back in May, and a 414% increase in copies sold this past week, trending at number three. Could it be the origin of Gore? Christian Bale killed the role. I really enjoyed his adaptation of the character. But this book is as hot as it is because of that cameo appearance of Null. So while people loved reading the God of Thunder run and thought Gore was a cool character, it wasn't until Venom number four that Donny Cates blew everyone's mind by showing panels from the Thor God of Thunder number six and saying, oh yeah, this was Null back in the day and he's back to mess up some stuff with Venom. And it was adapted in Thor Love and Thunder, but you just see the scene. Will Null be in the horizon one day, the abyss? Well, that's yet to be seen. I want to know the community's thoughts in the comment section below. At the list at number two, it's the goats. We were talking about Thor annual number five. This is a fun book. I know, Butch, I agree with you wholeheartedly. This is the first appearance of Tooth Nasher and Tooth Grinder, the goats that Thor is kind of saddled with as a punishment. He's got these annoying, bleeding goats that he has to deal with. They're kind of pulling around his, his chariot to bring him around. $45 average sales. We have a $399 CGC 9.6 this week, and we also have a Buy It Now sale and found out that it it was $850 for a CGC 9.8. Now, there's only eight copies in existence at a 9.8 on the census. The annuals are a little bit bigger, so they're more prone for damages. And on the census, there's only 29.6s. This is definitely one of the sillier moments that was used as comedic relief all throughout the film. And if you enjoyed Ragnarok, you would really enjoy the comedy in this movie. An increase of 883% in copies sold since they appeared in the movie. And we found out word this week, James Gunn has a Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special slated for the holidays this year. And they will be making an appearance. The GOATs! will show up again in the MCU. I think that's going to be fantastic if we see Tooth Nasher and Tooth Grinder again, as long as we don't see them roasting over a spit for a holiday meal. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button. We've arrived at the number one trending book in the cosmos of any multiverse. And with so much of the timeline in disarray, well, we're in need of some singularity. A-Force number one, this is the first cover appearance of Singularity on the 1 in 25 Stephanie Hans variant. Now, since it's a ratio variant, these are a little bit tougher to find, and we are seeing a $90 average sale with a $300 CDC 9.8. This is a 1,067% increase in copies sold after we saw a brief flash of something that looked like Singularity in the Thor movie. We see a field of stars in the embodiment of the return of Gore the God Butcher's daughter after wishing upon the embodiment of the universe, eternity, to bring her back. And she comes back in full as Chris Hemsworth's daughter, the embodiment of love with godlike powers wielding Stormbreaker. Now, Thor makes a promise to Gore that he will take care of his daughter, and we end up seeing Thor, who is Thunder, and Love, Love and Thunder together. This is amazing, and the fact that Singularity has all of these powers, including time traveling, and has met Ms. Marvel in the past in the comic books, there's a lot of potential happening, especially with Kang on the horizon. Colliding of worlds, variants, so much. We have multiverse problems. And we'll be here every single week to cover it. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button, and as always, geek responsibly. Nuff.
Sad. Oh, I'm so glad you made it to the end of the video because I'm going to break some news for the comic fam. I'm heading to San Diego Comic Con and I have a bunch of comic books to tell you about. Shout out The Swarm Hive Comics for the team up. Once Our Land, a virgin variant by Stan Yak. 300 printed with 50 carbon fibers that they're printing. I teamed up with them as well as the Golden Age Guru to bring this to the community at San Diego. It's optioned. There's a trailer that's already dropped. It looks fantastic. And you would know that Once Our Land has made it on the trending list multiple times over the last few years. Not only that, I've teamed up with Whatnot, the best new place to buy and sell collectibles, to bring back their hit ash can that they dropped in Denver when they announced their publishing company. And I have my unreleased David Mack cat cover, die cut cover, going in my own exclusive. That's right. I'm bringing the ash can back, Comic Tom exclusive, and I'm dropping that this next weekend. Whatnot is bringing the heat. They have copies of The Exiled in preview. Ninja Funk with a Kevin Eastman TMNT homage. Shout out to Illus Duminati, Javon Jordan doing a gorgeous looking canto. There's a Ric Flair variant, and you gotta check out what Trinity Comics is bringing to the show. They have a Mando variant. They have a recount set and a gorgeous Moon Knight that I know the comic fam's going to be hunting for. So I'm going to see if I can grab some copies to get them out to you. The best community in the world. Link is in the description to join me on Whatnot and take a look at these two other videos. We made them for you. See you in San Diego.